Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 14th of March. India's Home Minister defends implementation of citizenship law, says minority shouldn't fail. Bhutan PM sharing top gear rides in India for five year official visit. And Imran Khan condemns rigged elections, predicts Sri Lanka like situation in Pakistan. And now for all the details. Defending the implementation of citizenship law by Indian government, Home Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday asserted minorities need not fear as the law does not entail stripping anyone of citizenship. I report. Addressing concerns surrounding the Citizenship Amendment Act, India's Home Minister Amit Shah on Wednesday said, there is no reason for minorities in India to fear as no clause in the citizenship law suggests that nationality of anyone will be taken away. Shah, in an interview with ANI, said CA only aims to confer Indian citizenship to persecuted non-Muslim migrants from neighbouring Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before the cut-off date of December 2014. And through this law, their sufferings can be ended. Hitting out at foreign media outlets for scrutinizing and perceiving Indian government actions on Triple Talaq, Article 370 and the Citizenship Amendment Act as anti-Muslim, the Interior Minister questioned, does these outlets allow Triple Talaq, Muslim personal law and provisions like Article 370 in their country? minorities. <laughs> या तो किसी और व्यक्ति को डरने की जरूरत नहीं है क्योंकि सीए में किसी की नागरिकता लेने का प्रावधान ही नहीं है सीए सिर्फ और सिर्फ तीन देश अफगानिस्तान पाकिस्तान, पाकिस्तान और बांग्लादेश से हिंदू सिख बौद्ध क्रिश्चियन और पारसी जो जैन और पारसी शरणार्थी आए हैं इनको उनका अधिकार देने का कानून है Reacting to comments from chief ministers, non-BJP states that they won't implement the law in their respective states, Amit Shah said they don't have the right to refuse, as it is a central subject and not the states. Taking a dig at opposition alliance, Shah said parties opposing the law are practicing politics of appeasement. Congress leaders during the partition in their speeches said that those minorities should stay wherever they are due to the widespread bloodshed and they will be welcomed later in our country. But now they have started doing vote bank politics, he added. And वो माँ बहन बेटी के लिए वो सरण में आए भारत की तो क्या उसको यहाँ नागरिकता का अधिकार नहीं है और स्वयं कांग्रेस के नेताओं ने आजादी के बाद सैकड़ों भाषणों में कहा है कि अभी मारकाट चल रही है अभी जहाँ है वहाँ रह जाइए बाद में जब कभी भी भारत में आएंगे आपका स्वागत है परंतु बाद में इलेक्ट्रोल पॉलिटिक्स चालू है वोट बैंक की राजनीति चालू है एपीसमेंट के कारण वो वादा कांग्रेस पार्टी ने कभी पूरा नहीं किया a key promise in election manifesto of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BJP, the law was passed in 2019 by Indian Parliament. While the law makes it easier for non-Muslim refugees from neighbouring Muslim majority to get Indian citizenship, opposition and Muslim groups say the law is anti-Muslim and if combined with a proposed National Register of Citizens, could discriminate against India's 200 million Muslim. In his maiden overseas visit after resuming office in January 2024, Bhutan's Prime Minister Shering Tobge arrived in New Delhi on Thursday for a five-day official visit. Making the first pit stop in capital New Delhi, Tobge will hold bilateral dialogue with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi and President Draupadi Murmu before departing for Mumbai. Indian Foreign Ministry in a statement had said the visit by Bhutanese Premier will provide an opportunity for both sides to discuss ways and means to expand the enduring ties of friendship and cooperation between New Delhi and Thimphu. 
Tobge, who had assumed charge earlier this year, had also made clear his wish to maintain a deep relationship with India, the largest donor and trade partner of the Himalayan Kingdom. And incarcerated PTI chief Imran Khan slamming the Pakistan's general elections has predicted that Pakistan will witness a Sri Lanka-like situation as the nation's hopes were shattered by stealing the mandate. Khan said that his all predictions have proven true, further reiterating that he was not engaging in talks with the current rulers to reach a deal. He further said that the voters took revenge on the polling day, but the change via vote was not accepted. As Pakistan is about to seek a final tranche of loans from the IMF, Khan said that the nation will take to the streets after a new wave of inflation. Multiple legal cases were brought against Khan, which disqualified him as a candidate and sentenced him to long prison terms. However, he denies wrongdoing. Meanwhile, Pakistan Finance Ministry on Wednesday has said global lender IMF will hold a second and last review of Pakistan's $3 billion standby arrangements this week, during which the South Asian nation will ask for a new longer-term bailout. The four-day meeting, if successful, will release a final tranche of around $1.1 billion secured by Islamabad under a last caps rescue package last summer, averting a sovereign debt default. According to local media reports, Pakistan's finance minister, Mohammad Aurangzeb has said they will use the opportunity to make a case for a larger long-term program from the global lender. However, Pakistan has not officially stated the size of the additional funding it is seeking through a successor program. Amid retreat of Indian troops from Maldives, China sent a military delegation to Mali, Sri Lanka and Nepal to discuss further cooperation in defence issues. China's move suggests that the country seeks to build closer ties in South Asia to assert its influence and counter its strategic rival India. China has also heavily invested in upgrading the Maldives infrastructure and extended loans to it. Last week, the Maldives said it had signed a military assistance. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.